Hello. Bob Brockway here. First of all, I want to thank everybody who's uh, viewed the videos on my channel. I appreciate it very much. I hope you got something out of it. I sure enjoy doing it. A little bit that I can contribute to all you hobbyists out there that are interested in electricity of all kinds. But at this time, we're going to discuss capacitors. Now, there's a basic capacitor is just simply two plates with a gap between them. That gap is a resistance often referred to and is a dielectric. Now here we have the Wimhurst and what you have here in a standard Wimhurst, they all have them, is they call them Leiden jars. They're still, they're actually capacitors as we call them today. This was the first name given to them. And what that does, it stores more current. It allows the machine, it still puts out 70,000. This unit is capable or is, puts out 70,000 volts. Now that can be termed as pressure. But you can increase the volume though, which is current, by adding the capacitors. Right now the capacitors are standing alone. And what I mean by that, I don't know if you can see this or not, but there's a bridge that connects the two outer parts, which causes these to be outer, outer part of the cylinder to be neutral. And it increases the capacitance by quite a bit. Now, you still get a capacitance. It just doesn't hold as much current. And I hope you can see this. This is in relation to the spark. I did spark there. I'm not getting much, but it... Yeah, it's been it's pretty dry. There we go. And it builds up enough, but you can see how weak the spark is. And we're only running about an inch gap between the two electrodes up here. All right. Now, that's with each. This is a positive side. This is the negative charge in here that goes inside the Leiden jars or capacitors. Now we're going to bridge the two capacitor outer plates together. And this, this now makes these outer plates, we've got the negative inner plate, or positive inner plate, negative inner plate here, but the outer plates, even though they are opposite charged, they will be tied together and they will become a neutral. They get charged up, but because they are of equal value, equal area, they don't exhibit any field. Okay, now they're bridged together. You see the intensity of the spark? Now, if you haven't increased the voltage any at all, it is still 70,000 volts. What you have done is you have increased, it's actually measured in joules, which joules is a combination of current and voltage. Multiplied together is a joule. It's how much energy passes in one second over a distance. You can see the intensity increase quite a bit. Now, like I said, we still have 70,000 volts. You can think of volts as pressure. You can think of current as volume. If you're familiar with those terms, this will be much easier to understand. Now, we can even go further. 
I, everybody that, everybody that plays with electrostatic or electricity at all and makes their own and loves to, to build their own, as I do, just kind of a hands-on kind of a person. Now these are my own capacitors I built. They're set up the same as the capacitors on the Wimhurst, as far as the way they're wired in. Here's the bridge. Here's the bridge. This is the bridge here between the two. And this is the bridge on the Wimhurst. Just might get that out of the way. And both can be removed. This one just uses a couple thumb screws and it swings out of the way. This one you have to just pull them out. You have the same thing. I'm going to leave them together because I want to show you how much more current. Now we're still going to have 70 volts, 70,000 volts, but we're going to increase the joule value. There again, that's voltage times, or is it times or plus? If I look it up in the book, I think it's, uh, it's voltage and current put together. Now I make my I make my uh, capacitors out of just old plastic jars. These were happen to be peanut butter jars. And uh, I line the inside with aluminum. And uh, then the outside I lined. I only brought in the inside, the aluminum was only, only brought down. I only lined the, the flat surface to just... I didn't try to go roll it in or in. And then I put a bolt in the bottom and so I could bolt it on here and and I insulated the head inside and then I wrapped the outside with aluminum foil all the way under so that contacted the bolt. And then I made a pickup with a aluminum plate and a pickup rod inside and it worked out quite well now I want to if you're going to use I don't know what type of plastic this is but once it is stressed it has a great residual and what I mean by that is you can discharge this and you can come back in a half hour, hour, sometimes even four hours, and you can still draw a spark across the terminals. I've been bit so many times off this thing, I make sure I only handle it by the base. You just don't grab onto these things, and it's just the dielectric. And uh, talking, and dielectrics vary, of course, uh, depending on the material and the, and the, dis and the, the quality. the difference in the dielectrics and, and, and when they stress. Now this particular plastic, when it's stressed, like I said, it has memory, the residual effect. Just because you discharge it like you can do here, and in a half hour, I wouldn't grab those two terminals. In fact, I wouldn't grab, the, the, I wouldn't handle it with the outside and touch one of the terminals either. It's, uh, I've been it's not a heavy, it doesn't charge back up to its full capacity, but it certainly will get your attention. Now, when you set these, I've got these two probes here. These are just pickup probes, and I'm going to put them close to where the axis is for adjusting the, these discharge terminals. But I'm not going to touch them. I'm going to leave about an eighth inch. Gap. I don't know if you heard it or saw this, but they did spark across. Now, we're going to run the wind hearse. And it takes a while. There you go. I hope the camera picked that up. I really do. But you see how you've increased? That's a pretty good snap. Now, I can, uh, I can, I can widen the gap, and it'll build up more until... It break then it's, you get the breakdown of air and it's a pretty good report. But you 
see that it just let it. Now, remember, the thing to remember is that you still have 70,000 volts. What you've changed is the joule value. In other words, the amount of current coming out of that thing. And it unloads all at once, just like that. Now, another caution I want to stress to everybody. If you're going to capacitors, there, what you're seeing when it breaks down the air in that gap is the release, how many electrons traveled in one second across that gap, which is a lot less than one second. It only discharges, it takes a while to, to build it back up, but that's measured in joules. And 10 joules, if I got 10 joules to cross these two, this gap, then it'll kill you. It'll just plain electrocute you. I want you to keep it. And it's going to, even if I accidentally got hit now by carelessness on my part, it'll hurt you. You won't soon forget it. But you can see how adding the capacitors, these are much larger, you see how much in area between the capacitors that are on the winners and the size of the capacitors that, are, that I've built. Much, now it's storing them in both, and all four capacitors are being charged up. And then when the charge is high enough, it's sufficient to break, the air breaks down. The air is no longer a dielectric or an insulator, and you have the discharge. And that is a class 3 discharge. And it's a pretty good one. Now I have put these, I was running some tests on, on other things because I'm always trying things. If I get an idea, I got to play with it until I satisfy myself one way or the other. On it. And I had these hooked up in such a way that, that uh, with what I was testing on the Vandegraaff. Vandegraaff's 200 kV. And the test wasn't going well, and I was wa watching what I wanted it to do and not the capacitors themselves. And the <coughs> Vandegraaff charge these things up so much to such a high joule value that I had a full 8 inch spark jump from there to the base of the Vandegraaff and a very startling report and that's the bang. <laughs> it, it was almost like a small 22 discharge of a 22 pistol. Especially when you're in a room like this. It, but you can hear the report here is quite, uh, I'm sure the video, video's picking that up. Well, I just wanted to show you that, I know, uh, that if you're going to play with it, you got always, everybody always gets around at one point or another to build a capacitor. I just wanted to show you that, how it increasingly gets See? <laughs> Still charging now. Okay, now we're back. These capacitors have been removed from the system. You see, we get a nice spark, but it's not as intense. And the report is. Now I can disconnect the bridge at the capacitors that are on the Wimmers. I may have to close this gap. No, we're getting it. See? Believe it or not, that little spark is still 70,000 volts. And it, uh, it'll let you know. I wouldn't grab on it if I were you. You, uh, you will definitely know it. Well, I just wanted to show you that. It's a uh, fun thing to do. You just got to be careful. And uh, I like to discharge everything. And I learned uh, from experience, the school of hard knocks is a hard way. Don't grab onto these things 
in just any old way and thinking you're going to get away with it. And I still get bit now and then. But it's just, it's just a lot of fun. You can make them yourself. <laughs> Some, uh, you can make them a lot bigger. I don't know what you're going to do with it. Depends what you want to do with it. I, uh, I use them from time to time, run different tests with them when I think I need more uh, sustained. Uh, it, it doesn't sustain. I thought I could uh, use them to sustain uh, some of my work. It, it's not like a storage battery at all. I don't think of it that way. Because um, when these things discharge, it's a, uh, it's, it's right now. All right, uh, this is uh, July 14th, 2011, and uh, I hope you enjoy this and all the other videos I've done. I uh, I sure have had fun doing it, or having fun doing it. Hope to do some more for you, and we'll uh, get this out to you and uh, see what your response is if you. Uh, if you like my little channel, I hope you subscribe. So take care, everybody. Talk to you later.